Yep. Practice final. Could you bring that in on Monday? Maybe, if you okay. remind me. I have, I'm just going to use the same one I used last semester. I just got to print them out. So. Well, if uh, you don't, can you email it? Yes. Okay. Well, either way, if you email me, then I'll print them out. I'll have them. I email you right now. There you go, do it. The formula sheet will be on the press No, we're about to make it. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. So on your formula sheets, you can have the following. You, you have to know the area of a rectangle. You should know the area of a triangle. I'll go ahead and let you put down the area of a trapezoid. Why not? Well, you should probably know that one. See, what's the area of a trapezoid? Uh, one and a half height times one and a half height times base one. So it's just like a triangle would be one half height times base, but trapezoid has two bases. Right. Half height times base, half height base. Uh, so then we got the area of a uh, circle. Yeah, I should know that one too, but. Pi R squared. I like it. What's the circumference of a circle? 2 pi R. 2 pi R. Cool. All right. You should know those, but what the hell? I'll let you put those down. It's, uh, the area of triangle is just half base height. Yep. Uh, let's see, anything, any other area formulas you think you should be allowed to have on your sheet? I'm not going to ask you surface area questions, but I think I told you that a while back. Are you? Huh? Are you? We're going to get into volume, but area formulas, any other area formulas? I think that's about it. Uh, how about the cone? All right, so that's volume. So we're about to get into volume. I guess the cube is six, 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 six. No. Uh, all right. So there's the areas. Cube. Come on now. Cube. You know. Six times. Why six? You're talking about surface area now. Surface area won't be on the test. It's in the homework, so you know they exist. But I'm not going to have surface area on the test. What's the volume of a cube if it was x, x, x? What's the volume? Yes. X cubed. It's, it's length times width times height for some rectangular <laughs> solid question. All right. That you got to know. That you got to know. I'm sorry. Don't even write that down. If you write that down, you lose points. Um, so we can do volume of a cone. All right, let's do volume of a cylinder. And, and i got to consider how do I help you. Uh, so you can put V, C, Y, L. Sure. You may remember the volume of a cylinder. What's the repeated shape of a cylinder? What's the repeated shape? Uh, circle. circle. So it's the area of a circle times the height. So what's the area of a circle? So it's a circle times height. So the volume of a cone, I cut it out of a cylinder. Yeah, three. So it'll be one third the cylinder. So if I have a cylinder and I just chop out the middle part of it, take that out, that's one-third of the original amount. Leaves two-thirds behind. Uh, let's see, what about volume? What other volumes we got? Volume of a sphere. Anybody remember that one? Yep, four-thirds. Pi. R. No. Volume. Cubed. Four thirds pi r cubed. I like it. By the way, you should probably double check these in the book because I write that. Right. Uh, let's see. What else we got? What am I forgetting? Uh, we got, you got you got like the volume of any prism. It's big ass b times h. The volume of any pyramid. It's the same thing as these. Big ass B here would be pi r squared. Big ass B being the area of the base, not just a single length. It's the area of the base. So the area of the base times height. Cone is the simplest pyramid, so it's one third the area of the base times the height. So if I had a trapezoidal based shaped uh, thing, right? You take the area of the trapezoid times how long it is. Bam. That's, that's what this says. Area of the base, if it's 
trapezoidal base, area of the trapezoid, times how tall it is, right, or how long it is, if I got it laying on its side. Okay, maybe. I like you guys look at me like, did we talk about this? Uh, <laughs> that's weird. Anything else? I'm trying to remember. Anything else I forgot here? Uh, let's see, cylinder, sphere, prism, pyramid. Yeah, I got everything. Cool. What page is it on? And actually, it's funny. I, I opened my book up right to page 559, and that's where they summarize the, the volumes. That was really nice. I like that. Um, 559. Every chapter's got a summary, and the summary place is a really good place to go when you're getting ready for test. Um, you know, something else that came up in the homework, just a couple places, but I, it might show up again is the Pythagorean theorem. That one I'm not going to let you write. You've got to know that. The most important thing, what is the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared is C squared. What's the most important side in that statement? C, because that's the one that's made of the other two. So C should probably be the what side? The longest freaking side, because it's made of the other two. So in the homework, I see a lot of people just throwing in for A and B when one of them is the hypotenuse. That's the longest side, because it's open the most. The 90 degrees is the biggest, so if you've got a big old mouth, it can fit a stick in there. I always think about Return of the Jedi. Ah, no, right, right, anyway, sorry. So across from the longest, largest angle will be the largest side. So C has got to be that one that's across from the right angle. You can't just throw them in anywhere. I like it. We'll do a problem like that here in a minute. Uh, let's see, so before we did uh, geometry, there was the percentage stuff, and there's no formulas there. You guys just have to know how to work percentages. There's that change divided by original, but you got to know that. Any, any suggestions from Chapter 11? Section 11 one is really the only one that we did. For formulas, any other suggestions? Now's the time to suggest. All right, go, dude. Okay, um, and then we get to chapter 12. Chapter 12 is where we got a few formula to put down. Just don't forget, you, you uh, the formulas get in your way a little bit. If I give you a chart with all the numbers, or I tell you there's five uh, blue chips and whatever in a bag, don't even use the formulas. Uh, the formulas are really just if you only are given numbers, then the formulas can be used directly. Formulas kind of get in our way otherwise. Um, Okay, so what about the probability of A or B? What would that be? Yeah, if you add everybody in A to everybody in B, you better take out anybody that was in both because they got double counted. Right, just like happened in the primaries in a few states. Or the reverse, some people weren't counted at all. Yeah, uh, I think you should have noticed by now that units is huge. I've taken points out for and units, units. Some of you guys got your homework back. Units, units, units. You gotta tell me what the units. And what units would circumference be in if it was like centimeters, centimeters squared? What would what would circumference be in? Centimeters, because it's a pure length. It's not covering something, it's not filling a room. If you're covering something like area, that's square. Right? I can cover something by putting a bunch of squares on it. So that's why area is squared units. If I want to fill up a room, I can fill a room up with cubes. That's why volume is cubic. Officially, it's really just because it's one, two, three dimensions for volume, so it's going to be cubed. One, two dimensions for area, so it's squared. One dimension for length, so it's not its first power. You guys with me? So be careful about that. So all these will be cubes. These will be squares. This will be it, whatever it is. Right. Okay, cool. The PA or B thing, we can write down on a paper too. Totally. Yeah, these are still, this is still in the formula sheet. Um, so what about probability of A given B? Anybody remember the hell that? What goes on the bottom? Um, 
P of B. The given, the P of B. And the top. Hmm. It's like, I don't know, man. That's why we're making this sheet. All right, shit. A and B. The only way you can be in A if B happened is if you're in B and A. So it's got to be A and B. I feel like those are mostly just convoluted. Like, I'd rather just look at it and do it. Yeah, but like I told you, there was that one problem I gave you where I just give you numbers. And you have to use the formulas. So the formulas are true. They're just more powerful than I need for some simple where I can count. It's more than I need. But if I don't have anything that can count, then I have to rely on the formula. But I mean, I'm still, yeah, functionally it's still the formula, but I'd rather use logic than like recognizing, you know what I mean? Well, no, I agree with you. So if I give you a chart and I say, given that it's a dude, well, then I'm only going to look at the dudes. I'm not going to use a formula, right? Beautiful. I love it. So math isn't only about using formulas. It's being able to create formulas for when I do need them. And I normally don't need them. But like that... Uh, was it the last problem on that review? Yeah, number three on the review. That's where you got to use the formulas. Because they didn't give you anything to count. Yeah. Did we do 12-7 Yes, we did. 12-7 is this. Okay. So 12-8 is the homework you don't have to worry about. Yeah. If you do it, I'll give you some extra credit for it if you do it. Also, in the book, is the E2, E1 thing. What is it? Sorry? It's like the conditional problem, like this formula, but it's like A given B. Yes. It's like E2, E1. It's like on page 730. Oh, cool. They even use the. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of A and B, they use okay. E1, like event one and yeah. event two. Uh, and they do use this symbol, like, I, I'm always overly careful. That symbol means given. Oh, okay. Because, you know, math people, we don't like writing too much, we like to just get to the idea. So that's the same thing. That means given. So 12-7 was our last section? What's up? 12-7 was our last section. 12-7 is the last section. Yes. The final section. All right. Uh, where am I at? Oh, so this is just, you know, another way to say this is that. And then we, what is the probability of A and B? I use this to figure out it's probably an A... So it's probably a B given A. And this is really, we've done this before. Like, uh, it was when I had so many Snickers, and then I want to get another one that's a, that's a, that's a Butterfinger or whatever from that thing, and, and I had to change the second one if I ate the first one, right? So that's given that I ate the first one, what's probably the second one? That second number has to change. So again, I don't even consider it as I'm using a formula, but that is exactly why the formula says what it does, because that's what you do. Is that times P, B, yeah. given A? So the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So something you can't write on your formula sheet is the idea of independence. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk about that in a second, but I want to make sure. Anything else that you have a suggestion to put on your formula sheet? Anything we know to suggest we already know. Good point. Well, I mean, there are things that you hope I would let you put up here. Yes. Maybe. Maybe. For Maybe. the final, is there anything prior that we should have? You can bring in all your formal sheets. We're going we're gonna to actually make a formal sheet for the final, but you can... Okay. Uh, you can do that on Wednesday? We're going to do that on the day of review for the final. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, so Wednesday I'll have the test graded. I'll have an updated grade sheet summary. I'll have the answer key for the practice final. Oh, wait, so Monday I'm going to have to give you the practice final. I mean, Wednesday's the last day, so I'm going to do that anyway. So the email thing, don't worry about it. I mean, you already did it, but hey, what the hell. So, so we'll, do the, we'll do the this on Monday then? The test is on Monday. Right. Wednesday I'll have the test graded. I'll have an updated grade sheet that shows you what your grade is and what you're going to have to make on the final to do so many things. And uh, the answer key for the practice final. But you won't print that out. You'll make us write it out. What? The answer key? He's giving the answer key. Yes. No, no, the, uh, the touchstone. Formula sheet. Yeah, sheet. we'll create it together. Yeah, I won't make one for you. Yeah, okay. Could you email that? 
What? <laughs> you can watch the, the, the fucking video. You can watch that. Uh, It'll be on the video. Just like this is on the video now. If you miss. If you have to miss next Wednesday. Yeah. I just want to know the last thing that you write. It doesn't matter. Is it dependent or something? Where are we? I'm sorry? I'm asking the last thing. This one is, this is always true. Always. But if, if B and A are independent... This equals probability of B. Yeah, if, they're, if B and A are independent, then the probability of B given A is the same as it was. They don't care about each other. B is like, oh, you happened A? I don't give a shit. I'm still B. I mean, that's the idea. That's why the, the word makes sense. Independent makes sense. So if A happens and B doesn't change, they're independent. So you can only directly multiply these two probabilities if they are independent. And if they're mutually exclusive, if they're mutually exclusive, what's this? If they mutually exclude each other, what's the probability that I get something that's both? Zero. So then officially you can just add them directly, but does the formula change? No, this is just zero. So the formulas don't change, it's just that parts of them get simplified in certain situations. So this is what I meant. If I tell you A and B are mutually exclusive, you should immediately write probability of A and B equals zero. And then anywhere you need to use that, you know that. Okay, maybe. Hopeful. Homework is a good idea. Uh, okay. Um, I think that's everything. Can I grab one of these? What's that? Answers. Go ahead. All right, so what did I just say? We were going to do an example of something. I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, oh, uh, I want to draw this. So we're done with the formula sheet. Don't put anything else on the formula sheet. I'm going to write now. So uh, this is interesting. We, uh, we've seen things like this before, little Venn diagrams. But if I said, like, Just make sense of some of these, just look at these, some of these uh, equations in a different way. If I said, given that B happened, so B definitely happened, what's the only way that A could also happen? Could this happen? At the same time? No. So I know B happened. What's the only way that A could also happen is if it's in here. And what's this? There. So that's why this is this. This is what happens. What's the only part that matches what I'm looking for? The A's that are in B, A and B. I mean, this is another kind of visual way of looking at that formula. Okay, maybe. And then the, I think the other thing I was saying was uh, if they are independent, if they're independent, then this is true. That's what I was saying earlier. If they're independent, B happens, does A care? Mm -hmm. No. That's how you tell. If I say, are these two things independent, you have to show me this if you think they are independent. So that's just like number uh, 2E on the probability review sheet. So now it's it's wide open. Whatever you guys want to talk about. Did anybody not get their quiz back? Everybody got their quiz back? Oh, oh here. It's up to you guys. It's whatever you want to talk about. You know, math related may be better. Like, watch out. Uh...
So this relates to number 2E on the probability review, and it relates to number 9E on the practice test. Do you have any extra practice tests? I gave them all, I think. Did you? I gave them all away. I think so. That's all good. Yeah. I'll take a picture of someone's. Here we go. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> all right. Yes. Can you do a conversion of one of the ones from the quiz, mm -hmm. one of the percent to the fraction? Sure. Um, can you do the last one, point five six four? Point. <laughs> Is it 564%? Uh, no, 0.564%. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, just to make it fair, I'll do one that nobody had. Is that one that that's related to that? What's that? Is that one that nobody got? No, 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 no. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, there's four different versions of the quiz, so if I do that one specifically, I'm helping out one fourth of the people. That's not fair. Oh. So, okay. I'm going to do one just like that. So if I had that, and I got it converted to a fraction, to be honest, I wouldn't go straight from here to a fraction. Because the wrong answer is this. What's percent mean? Uh, Out of 100. So this is the wrong answer. And you might say, well, that's shit, Jeff. What did you just say? Did you just hear yourself? You just said it was over 100, Jeff. And I know, but that's not a fraction. A fraction does not have decimals in it. It's not a decimal. It's a hybrid. I want a pure fraction. So, to be honest, what you could do with this is I'm allowed to multiply top and bottom by anything I want to except zero. So I would multiply by one, two, three thousand. One, two, three. There. That's what it is as a fraction. But the better way to do this, convert this to a decimal first, because decimals are fractions. They're just not written as a fraction yet. So what would this look like as a decimal? Which way do I have to move this place? Uh, yeah, back. I like it. So it'll be point zero zero one three two. What place is this in? Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. Cool. So a hundred thousand. Either way you look at it. So real quick, if I had five point eight seven over a hundred. That is one two one two five hundred eighty seven over ten thousand. What do you do? Just multiply top and bottom by hundred. I like it. Okay. Anything else? Yes. <coughs> you have the floor. Nobody else is asking anything. It's you. Okay. Go ahead. Um, the one question, I, don't, I, don't know, I can't do the exact one, but if you want to do something similar, that like if you draw 14,000 to a All right, so let's say percent increase. I made uh, $40,000 last year, and uh, $58,197 this year. And my lemonade stand, right? I upsell. Uh, what was the percent increase in my revenue? So how do I do that? I mean, to find the percent men in this room, I would count the men divided by the total. To find the percent blank, I have to find that. So if I say find the percent change or the percent increase or whatever, you have to first find the increase. So how much did it increase by? Uh, 18,197. Divided by where it started. That's all. It's change divided by original. That's how you find percent change. Because if I said I made $40,000 and now it's changed by, it's increased by 10%, wouldn't you take 10% of 40000 so this percentage is based on this number. That's why it's got to be based on that number. It's got to be based on where you started. And I just divide that, make a decimal, make a percent if you want to. Cool. So it's always changed divided by original. Where is the 181 from? Oh, the difference. So it's change. How much did these change by from 40,000 to that? 
Is 18,197 right? Oh, uh, yeah, no. Cool. Got it. So what if, uh, is everybody decent with that? Anybody did that for me? Anybody did that? Anybody? Can you do that for me? Does anybody have a calculator? I did it, but I... I Not with those numbers. Because what if I went the other way? What if I made 58197 last year and now I made 40000 Would it be the same percentage change? So who's got this here for me? 0.45. Who? 0.45. 0.45. Thank you. Sorry. Roughly. All right. Sounds about right. So what if it was 58000 and I said last year and 40000 this year, right? Lemons, they increased the price on me. Damn them. It's still changed by 18197 but what was the, what's the original now? What was the original? What's the original? 58,197. Now it's going to be based on that number, so it would be a different percent. So if you increase something by 10% and then decrease it by 10%, you'll actually end up below where you started. Because that second 10% is of a bigger number. It's going to take you further down. Shit. And whatever that is, I don't know. 0.31? Yeah, so it's 45% if it's that way, and it's 31% if it's the other way. It's weird. Sure. Alright, man. The leading students. There it is. Alright, let me go ahead and give you the answer key. I don't know if Isaiah got one. Hold on. tickets are sold, 1,000 tickets sold. We buy uh, three tickets for uh, $5 each. All right, how are we doing so far? Sounds familiar? Uh, uh, three prizes. Uh, there's one prize and that's a uh, Two hundred dollars. There's one that's a hundred dollars, and then there's two that are fifty bucks each. So the whole point with this is, if you can put it in this form, you're good to go. So, how many ways could I win? Yeah, four, but there's like three main three main things I could win, right? So I could win uh, $200. So overall, how much would I make? How much did it cost me to get into the game? 15 So it's negative 15 right there. So if I win $200, how much did I actually make? 185 And what's the probability I do that? One out of 1,000. So far, so good? So there's an amount, and then there's a probability of getting that amount. And then you keep going. Uh, $100, so I'd actually make... Uh, where am I at? Sorry. 85, yeah. 85. And what's the probability of that? Again, it's... One. One out of a thousand. Oh, I'm sorry. We bought three tickets, though, right? 
Yeah, yeah three hundred thousand. That's fine. I forgot I made three tickets. So as soon as we bought three tickets, we triple our chances. So what about winning? If I win fifty, I actually win how much? Uh, Thirty-five. Yeah. And since there's two of those, I'll have six chances out of a thousand. So what's probably I lose? If I lose, how much money am I out? Fifteen. Negative fifteen because that's going away from me, flowing away. And what's probably that happening? Well, it's the leftovers, right? Three, six, twelve. Nine eighty-eight, because that's the rest. I mean, the actual lottery. If you ever noticed, it's, it says the odds of winning are, you know, seven million something to one. It's like that's the odds of against you winning. So it's like, yeah, you're more likely to get hit by a meteorite and lightning at the same time. It's not quite true, but. Um, like if you're hit by lightning while being bitten by a shark. Um, that would be a good day. Ah, oops! <laughs> the shark would let go. Dang. I ain't messing with that. <laughs> He's electrified. Sure. Is correction going to be on a different piece of paper or can they just be... As long as I can the... make sense of what happened. Okay. Yeah. So then what do I do here? Right there, yeah. Multiply across, right? It'll be that percentage of 